<laughs> well, you were you were a little more like devout and serious about it in college, though, weren't you? Because yeah. I remember you in like some devotional, and I went with you to get the tattoo. Yeah, because tattoos are an incredible form of sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. Christian Podcast. I'm Casey. And I'm Sam. And today we're joined by a good friend from college, former roommate to me, Chris Deaton. What's going on, Chris? Hey, just uh, living the dream. (laughs) (laughs) So I, both uh, Casey and I had at one point roomed with not, well, I didn't share a room with Deaton. Um, I don't remember if you say that's news to me. Uh, But we we had dorms. You guys shared a room, but I had um, been on a dorm as well with Deaton. I spent my first year at Liberty University on the dorm with him. And Chris and I, we roomed together my first semester there, and then I moved in with Ryan after that. But uh, we—I think we were both. That's uh, right. You left me after one semester. I did. You were too dirty. (laughs) He's like, this yeah. dirty guy is not working out for me. <laughs> I think uh, I think you and I were both a little out of our element, um, a little overwhelmed by the atmosphere when we first yeah. got there. I mean, I, would you say that's correct for you? Uh, sure. And then I roomed with Dan Kelly, and that was uh, much more my element. Is I, it, yeah. It's not about that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> His name has come up a few times on this man, and uh, I didn't know if like we could like reference other people on the yeah. podcast. I didn't know, so I didn't know. If I mean, not that those. I mean, those are uh, those references fall on kind of deaf ears. For deaf, yeah, for sure. I, but the people who know it will time, enrich uh, it. Right. Every time we bring up Dan Kelly, we need like a little soundbite that that inserts <laughs> the Dan Kelly backstory. The long story short is Dan is like one of the most interesting and unique people. And we keep, we always talk about him and his name comes up so much when we want to have him on so bad. I really think you need to, like you, you really have to. Like I will, sure. For I no reason to. other than just have him go over some of the old stories that he used to tell us. And, and, just and to be fair, most of us, when you get past the, uh, the shiny candy coating, have a, a rotten peanut inside. <laughs> oh yeah if there is even a peanut <laughs> it's just, just an empty, empty. void <laughs> yeah. like i'll when say this i don't know if you and you chip your tooth yeah but i've i've kept up with not like kept up like actual human contact with him but i've facebook stalked him a lot i don't know and like i just really i don't know there's i just really appreciate where he is right now it seems i don't know <laughs> I haven't, I don't know. I haven't heard from him or known. I don't have no clue what's going on with him, but I know that if we. He's really funny too. Like I really enjoy his posts. Yeah. His posts are great. Yeah. So so give us the rundown, man, on your, uh, your backstory. I know we've had this discussion before, but you know, it's been a while. You don't exactly keep up with people very well, which we've already discussed off air. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't want to take away too much from my memoirs, you know, that I'm trying to prepare. Yeah, you're writing your autobiography right now. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but I I guess in short, uh, just the scope of, I guess, what this podcast is for. Like, I grew up in a very, definitely a very Christian home. I would say it's pretty conservative. Um, Not, uh, definitely not like super conservative, but conservative enough to earn that label. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and went to small, I like rural North Carolina, little town called Belmont, um, and definitely very rural. Went to a small private school since I was eighteen months old, so in the nursery. <laughs> so I was a I was a legacy student at a uh, Cramerton Christian it. Academy. Yeah, legacy birth. Yeah, mm-hmm. twelve. So. So I went there for a while and went to, you know, just like your typical North Carolina rural Baptist churches. Uh, Grew up pretty conservative, 
Uh, oh man, I'm tr- I'm trying to just hit it at a high level without going how to any thickets. How many people in your high school, your Christian high school, and how uh, many people in like your church ish? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, my graduating class was uh, it was either 22 or 23. I don't wow. know what person that's I'm you, forgetting. Massive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> compared to the private schools up there in Michigan, I'm sure that's pretty huge. But <laughs> yep. but uh, uh, I had a lot of friends at public school. Like all my youth group peeps, they were public school people, so they kept me a little edgy, is what I like to Ooh, think. I was gonna say you're a little contaminated, yeah. but you yeah, so. Back around. <laughs> I knew all the I knew what all the dirty jokes were because of them. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, was then, um, was it good? Your was it something? Um, you were were you so surrounded by Christianity that it was essentially your only bubble? Like I know you had, like you said, you had public school friends, but were your were pretty much your friends groups and your parents friends and everyone in your circle predominantly christian oh yeah absolutely and i think that's even kind of like being part of that area of i guess the quote-unquote like bible belt is like technically if you ask everybody they they're a christian you know (laughs) even if they're like a horrible person or really don't do anything that perpetuates like the name of jesus they're all like by almost like hereditary you know a a christian like when so, people are Jewish, <laughs> yeah. Catholic. Like I'm Catholic. Yeah, sure. Oh well, yeah, my parents are Catholic, so I'm like that's Catholic is big up in New England, and that like I, almost everyone I, I mean I I didn't go to a Catholic church, but people outside of uh, Protestantism, almost mm-hmm. everyone's parents were Catholic, and they were just yeah, yeah we're Catholic. That we're a Catholic family. I think a lot of people don't really know what it means to not be a Christian. For them to not be a Christian would it be to wave a aggressive banner of like atheism you know okay, yeah and so I, I definitely grew up in that bubble i mean there's definitely various levels of sincerity and um i can't think of a better word off the top of my head but like tenacity like within like the the embodiment of their faith but yeah i would say that that was definitely the most pronounced bubble how did um, you internalize it as a kid like or as like a teenager in youth group um was it just like this is what we do uh, and you didn't think a ton about it or is it something that you were like what was your on a scale of one to ten your commitment level to it based on your maybe actions on a personal level like how much you read the bible and did all that kind of stuff like i feel like those are the types of things that kids who are serious about their faith at that age are like the things that they do i don't know yeah about other things to do other than maybe a high school uh-huh. Christmas trip but usually kids go on those because the girl they like was going on them also <laughs> mm. 100%. i would say it was definitely very uh utilating i don't know is that a, a weird word it was definitely nope. very... <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to sound that yeah. one out yeah i don't even know if i pronounced it correctly it was definitely uh up and down and yeah. I would say for most of my life, it was just very uh, experientially, like cultural, uh, my, the outworking of my faith and even the sincerity and introspection of my faith. I, I was gripped with a few questions here and there, but for the most part, it was just like very chill. I was just like, I don't want to think too deeply about this or I don't want to, you know, just go super in like, I don't know, like I was a nice kid. Oh man, it's just crazy. I, it's hard for me to even remember much of my life before yeah. I was eighteen. I was like, did I really exist for much? Of, I don't know. <laughs> That's why you believe in simulation theory, which you're gonna <laughs> <do>. <laughs> exactly exactly. <laughs> so it's hard for me to re- remember a lot unless I like really sit down in specific events. But like, um, I was just very chill, and like I was like, yeah, I'm a Christian. I knew certain things, you know, but I wasn't like, I wasn't very like dogmatic. I wasn't very, you know. It sounds uh, like you didn't have a lot. I was a good kid. I was a boring good kid. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I fell in that same category. It, <laughs> it sounds like you didn't have a lot of things contesting that worldview in your life. So they didn't. You didn't have any reason. I don't know. I want you to. I'm going to make a statement. Uh, and I'm going to make it hopefully neutral, but you can respond to it. Uh, okay. I. I mean. Fine, Casey. I won't make that statement. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Well, you were you were a little more like devout and serious about it in 
college though, weren't you? Because yeah. I remember you getting like some devotional and I went with you to get the tattoo. Yeah, because tattoos are an incredible form of sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> I am insincere. No, no. Yeah, and I guess I guess I was trying to get there before Sam so rudely interrupted me. Oh God, okay. But, uh, I no, I, I definitely became more sincere the summer before my senior year of high school is when I was like, oh, yeah, if I actually believe these things, which are pretty – you know, big statements, you know, about God and Jesus, like that actually demands something of me in my life. Like I can't just take those things with a level of apathy or neutrality. Mm -hmm. um, either like I'm just crazy or, you know, like some sort of genius needs to kind of flow from that. And so I would say, and there were some other people that kind of came into my life. Uh, that's when like Laura, then Reitzel, you know, now McElroy uh, was kind of one of those forms of catalyst and growth, I would say for me. Okay. Um, but like my senior year is when I was just like, yeah, I'm going to like take this seriously. And that's also kind of what led me to the decision of going to Liberty. Because before then, I was actually planning on going to NC State and studying biology and natural science. Interesting. Yeah, for like a whole lot of years from like fourth grade. This, you may not have known this, from like fourth grade to junior year in high school, I wanted to be a herpetologist, which is a zoologist that studies reptiles. And Steve Irwin was my biggest hero ever. Hey. Before. Yeah. That's cool, man. I did not know that. It's, yeah. Do you, uh, do you have uh, moments of sadness into your 30s that you uh, didn't pursue that route? Sometimes when I think like I could have been – his spiritual successor <laughs> you know um but and spent my days you know chasing komodo dragons and uh king cobras like a real but, coyote peterson sort of character well is that the guy who gets who stings himself with yeah. everything no That's not like that famous the hard way yeah, yeah no. <laughs> I, I would have not done that um but yeah, I, I think it was like, I realized like, oh, if I'm serious about my faith, then I should go to a Christian school because that's just what I naively thought that I should do. Yeah. My high school pushed like three colleges, Bob Jones, Pensacola Christian, and one other school that nobody's ever heard of that has like 150 people in it. And so it was rebellious for me to consider liberty. At the time? Say what? They didn't push liberty? No, liberty was way too liberal for them. <laughs> wild yeah so, like no that's the high school i went to i should have mentioned that earlier yeah. <laughs> did you guys get the uh the reps from pensacola christian come up and like oh do their yeah we had out oh, man i wish like sometimes i do think about this if i were to write like my own christian like fan fiction or whatever is just like take what i know right now and to go back into high school i would have stirred up so much trouble like we had a we had a three hour long sermon one time at our school retreat slash revival. Wow. It was all about the evils, like the evils, mind you, of contemporary Christian music. Oh, no yeah. way. They just, they just bypassed like secular music. Like we don't even have to talk about how evil that is. Dude, but it's, dude, uh, I, it's we're, like, we're like spiritual brothers. Yeah. I, that's exactly my story. That's why we bonded so well that one semester before you <laughs> moved <laughs> moved out. Right. Okay, you had this, to brings leave. To a, this brings me to a very important question. Okay, uh -huh. and you have to answer off the cuff, rapid fire. Um, part two parts. First part, favorite Christian rock bands. Second uh -huh. part, favorite Christian rappers. Okay, one, hands down, DC Talk. <laughs> yes. Like, All right. Hands down. Like <laughs> I, I still owe a certain amount of like devotion. You're still down them. with the DC talk. Still down with the decent Christian talk. Um, <laughs> and Christian rapper, uh, DC talk, <laughs> early <laughs> stuff. So, All right, that's a fair answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I've listened to some other things. I never really got too much into Christian rap. Listened to some Lecrae and Andy Minio, like here and there. But I've, by the time I was getting out of like Christian music, I was just. Christian rap is just like, oh, that's that's nice over there or whatever. Man, I remember yeah, my really didn't keep up. At my mm -hmm. church when I was a kid, uh, there was this like I didn't uh, again being homeschooled, whatever. Like I didn't. 
my parents didn't like a lot of music, but they didn't, they weren't overly invested in what we were listening to. We, yeah. And I got more into music after, um, I was of the Napster generation and Mm -hmm. I I remember that or whatever. One of the ones that came out after Napster was like Morpheus or something was maybe one of them, but I Mm -hmm. I downloaded the music and it was all the the pop culture hits of the time, like your some 41s and Mm. you know, uh, whatever. But I remember there being, I, I pastor at my church gave a sermon about the, how bad and awful some of the, um, contemporary music was of the day and he mm-hmm. he quoted Sum 41 from the pulpit and uh he's like listen to he goes, listen to some of the lyrics from these bands that are that your children are listening to and then he just reads the doctor said my mom should have had an abortion and then <laughs> he said the a word uh-oh everyone's just like Brr. it's like yes. and you go and then every kid there all like kind of looking side to side at each other like the guy doesn't have any idea what he's talking about. Like yeah. <laughs> everybody knows. He might as well song. just summon Satan straight out of that <laughs> lyric. Everyone knows the song, and everyone knows that the point of it was just a joke on him being a like a useless person. Like, mm-hmm. and he's just taking it so seriously. And then he read some Eminem lyrics from uh, the pulpit too, which, uh, I mean, I'll hand it to him on some Eminem lyrics. If you read the, <laughs> some of those weren't great. Yeah, you, you don't have to look very hard there. Yeah, no. dude. What, Deaton, during their uh, anti-contemporary Christian music sermon, do you mm-hmm. remember which bands they brought up as like an example? Oh man, like well, throughout my period at that uh, school, especially like in high school, we had multiple sermons about it because I guess they knew it was an quote unquote like issue. <laughs> um, like I mean, basically anybody you can think of. They didn't even like go to like the like the rock stuff like they were even like michael w smith wasn't kosher for the you know and i remember one sermon the guy brought in mercy mercy me's i can only imagine and he used like will i dance before you jesus you know or something will i behold he's like we're not gonna dance we're not gonna just like boogie in front of jesus i'm like okay well what (laughs) there is like no contextual understanding of what's going on at all with you is there and that's, like it's just that's a hard and, line stance, man. that is that is very hard line stance and and i just kind of throughout that whole time and they were also like obviously like super huge and king james only and and that stuff i was just like my my just a chill dude and so i was just like whatever i don't believe that but i just won't tell you about it and my parents were always and i pre- the more the older i've gotten the more i think i appreciate how they they raised me in certain ways because they were certainly never that dogmatic my parents actually like encouraged us to ask questions and a lot of things and so they never turned down questions and so to hold certain tensions was was felt more natural to me than i think it did for a lot of people and and so that is something that i do appreciate even like with certain things like in the bible they'd be like yeah there's maybe some tension here and they weren't like biblical scholars or anything, but they were like, well, this is, you know, what this says, or this is something that everybody says, but it's not really actually in the Bible or, and so with certain eccentricities of like my school were just being like weird. And I would say like fundamental in certain issues, like they were just like, oh, yeah, just don't worry about that. And just behave nice around them. Don't stir up any controversy which, oh, wow. like I said, if I could just go back in time with like my brain, I would just, I would stir it all up. I know, especially with some of that like that hard line. So what's crazy is like even what blows my mind about uh, those type of hard line stance, like the anti, like even having a problem with the, that line about dancing. It's like, look, I don't. Have you read? It's like, have those people actually read any of the Bible? Like, I'm pretty sure dancing yeah. shows up a few times. In well, that's what that like, line comes from. Is right. like David like rejoicing over like a uh, like the law of God, you know, and like yeah. dancing. You know, <laughs> like, well, that's not what actually dancing was. Like, he was moving because he was so excited. Like, what I, what do you think they're talking about? I think like, David was twerking. That's my personal yeah. opinion. <laughs> This dude in Mercy May songs yeah. just imagine bumping and grinding when he meets <laughs> Jesus. Like, that's like the uh, alcohol thing we were talking about the other day, where it's like, 
oh, well, back then the water wasn't purified. And so they had to put alcohol into the water and it was only like 0.2%. So it's yeah. really not even alcoholic. So yeah. it doesn't even count. Nobody would drink alcohol if they were a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Did I hit all the points? Yeah, yeah that was good. And they were like, it was basically O'Doul's. Jesus turned water into O'Doul's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, their their tolerances must have been pretty low back then. I know, I know. I, it's funny too because I'll never like anytime anyone has that stance on drinking. It's just like you just direct people to Jesus. Like, they, like the whole water into wine story is so funny because it's like everyone was wrecked, and then Jesus is like, "Here's more wine, and this wine's dope." Like, <laughs> it's like this is the better, stronger yeah. stuff, and it's just like okay. Oh, you got the you you drank the good shit, blew through the cheap shit. And he's just like, this party's not over yet, guys. <laughs> All calling in sick to work tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, man. So, okay. You went to Liberty and yes. that was, Correct. yeah. So was that, um, and that was kind of a, a, a jumping off point for taking your faith more seriously. Um, yeah, that was, I would say my freshman year, was so much of a building block off of what my senior year in high school was. And oh man, I don't even know how to give a capstone of like the next 10 years in any sort of concise way. But the, I really do think, and I don't know, this may sound like a, just like an oxymoron for so many people who might listen to this, but I got so much more of a diversity of experience and relationships with people at Liberty even yeah. though that seems like so much of a, a small, you know, scope for so many people. But for me, it really was very like eye opening, especially like our freshman dorm that year, uh, Casey. And even subsequently, like the next year, sophomore year, like uh, there were so many people from so many different areas and experiences, um, different areas of the country, different thoughts. Like I, it really opened my mind up to like, people don't just think how I thought in like yeah. Middletown, North Carolina. And that was so, I think, helpful and formative to me that that also set in things in motion of like understanding, like the way that I see things is like not the only way that there is to see things. And there's validity and in, in, in appreciating beauty and differences. Like I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that in that way my freshman year, but that certainly started that perspective and appreciation and I think that was incredibly helpful. Uh, yeah, I had this me. dude. I had a similar like a, a, because ev- the outside world looks at Christianity as something that's monolithic, and yes, um, and you even think it is growing up in your bubble. You're like, this is what Christianity is, and I mean, mm-hmm. it sounds like you got a slightly different perspectives. Like there was more of the hardline stance of your school, and then there was your mm-hmm. your like what you would get from your parents. Was your church as hardline as your school? Or no, no, was- my church was like super casual. And my church, I very much appreciated my church. I would have different probably things to say about it now in my perspective. I would still say it's like, it's definitely, uh, most of the people there are very uh, conservative and all that that entails, but they're much more open and I don't know. I mean, I even thought just from the fact that I could wear jeans and sneakers to church meant we were just super like hip and cash, but I would see it as more of a genuine and healthy place. Um, Even still now, in some ways, it's not my, it's like my parents' church still, but. Yeah. My parents still go to the same church that I went to that was formative for me. Um, But yeah, I was going to say that like Christianity being monolithic to the outside world, like you would think going to a Christian, an evangelical Christian school, you would be like just kind of steeped in that same exact thing a little bit more. And mm-hmm. I mean, you are uh, from the academy, but you aren't from the people. And I, I was like, I it, that was where I realized how many different ways there were to be Christian. And even then, that was still mm-hmm. a small school. Like there wasn't, you know, it was the, the, the Christian sphere is even bigger than that. And, uh, but it did. It introduced me to a lot of different ways to understand and Christianity as well, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't expect to get that there. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you wanted to do biology, and then senior year you had a shift because you wanted to take your faith seriously. What did you end up going to college for? Well, 
I think you know the answer to this, don't you? Are you just using this as an, an example to like mock me or no, I, I want the people to know? <laughs> I actually forgot and but now I know where it's going because Casey and I did just spend probably like ten minutes really shitting on maybe the degree that you're about to say. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you I, I I could have probably added a substantial amount to that as well. But this is actually one of the things that people find most surprising about me. Like after I graduated undergrad and got like my master's, people just automatically associated me with my master's and didn't really, I guess just forgot that it, and that I had an undergrad. And I have left it so many people, like guess what my undergrad was in? And like <laughs> two people have guessed it in the past like 15 years. <laughs> and it is that surprising apparently. Um, so what is it? Everyone's in suspense. I know, I know. I'm just, you can even add some some nice little, it, it's pad it out, pad the time out a little bit further. <laughs> but I was a worship major, okay. worship yeah. specialized in biblical studies. I tell hey. people now that I was a music major, just because that's a much easier to explain. <laughs> but um, it was a much harder degree at Liberty. Okay. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> is no. is Liberty the only place that offers a worship degree? Uh, no, there's there no there there are others. I, I would say that a bunch of other schools, their music degrees are probably more geared to that. But um, in some ways, it was easier. Like the notation systems and things that we we used uh, were a little bit more casual. Um, but we definitely still had like musicianship classes and music theory classes, which were still pretty challenging. But all that to say, what am I doing in that? capacity <laughs> nowadays absolutely nothing what did you get your master's in what did you end up doing for a master's? i got my master's of divinity in theological studies um okay. so uh which kind of like an academic research slash kind of pastoral it was for me it was more academic and research oriented than pastoral oriented okay. you can kind of choose which direction you'd like to focus in so that's what i got my master's in and i actually finished it's a 90 credit hour degree which is a big one but i finished with like pretty close to 120 credits i was i was pretty i went i took too many um audits and extra classes that were interesting to me because a lot of the classes that were built up in the framework of the degree were boring to me so i was like if i'm going to do this i want to take some interesting classes and those <laughs> definitely padded out my time where um did you where did you get that through I got that through Liberty. I because it was free. I at one point I was going to change and go to another school, uh, but I got a job there. And I guess you know, I don't know. You probably don't know how how thick my ties with Liberty um, have gone. They were actually just severed this past uh, April. <laughs> That's oh. when I actually cut ties with Liberty. So surprise, surprise! I was in the of the beast for a while. Want to get into this? Wow, before... so you didn't, you didn't get to live through the the fall. Well, I I saw it coming, and I was there as it started to, but I was still I'm still close enough to rejoice <laughs> in parts of it. Um, but yeah, I I was a resident director there for eight years, which oh. is just super humbling. Yeah, I was an RD. Did you know that I was an RD? But I. I... I feel like I remember you doing becoming an RD, uh, like when it first. You happened. just assumed that I had stopped a lot sooner than I did. Yeah, I didn't know you were still doing it. I didn't know you'd done it that long. No, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean RD is a good gig. I don't. It's like if you have it in you to just do yeah. that. Like, it's such a good gig. It, it it really it really was, and it allowed me uh, freedom to transition out of it in a good way too. Yeah. Like I had, I had actually planned only do a few years i mean it is a good gig so i i stayed a little longer but about year five i was like okay i'm ready to move on and i actually was looking into doctoral programs i was planning on getting my phd in ancient near eastern studies um okay. and which is something i was just incredibly fascinated still yeah. fascinated so i was looking at places like university of chicago wheaton um there were a couple out of the country schools that i was looking at um but because I really want to do that. And then I kind of determined, like, ah, I love learning, but 
I really don't want the next like five, six years to be completely devoted to like reading and writing, mm -hmm. like as my whole life. Like I love learning, but I ha hated writing papers. And I was like, hmm, that's probably something that I should take note of. <laughs> so did you know Jerry Jr.? personally no uh no but you knew so, becky personally no. right <laughs> no 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 <laughs> definitely not even less personally uh, <laughs> Dude, I, I, I actually tried to stay out of i like out of i try to keep a like a low profile because for the last like i was becoming like the edgy rd in some ways uh, and so I was trying to keep a low profile because I knew if the more I was out there, I was I was like I can only bound not to like expose myself for so long, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's a school where if you uh, if you start having shifting ideologies, that's you don't want them to know about it if you're doing any mm -hmm. sort of staff work for sure. Mm -hmm. For watered down Christians like Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, did you? Uh, I. No, obviously, I knew you through our undergrad. Um, yes. Obviously, mo more so maybe like probably the best sophomore year, uh, mm -hmm. in, maybe into junior year. And, mm -hmm. but I, I feel like at Liberty, this was a place where people like us kept these things to themselves if they had them. Did you have any sort of like undergrad crisis of faith? Hmm. Uh, I, I would not see it as any sort of punctilier or like, uh, I'm trying to think that's a, a, a stupid word, but uh, any sort of like moment of, of crisis of faith, I would see it as more of like various times of reoccurring, uh, little crises of faith, yeah. you know, like they kept like kind of like resurging. And I don't know, like I struggle to like say like the word crisis of faith, but at the same time, I feel like that's a pretty accurate description. I've like, um, I would say that there was certainly confusion, doubts, questions, just, it was, it was basically like a revolving, like a uh, door, yeah. you know, like one of those little like doors that goes around and around. And I was just trapped inside of it, like between confidence, doubt, confusion, utter disarray, you know, like and all sorts of like emotions and thoughts kind of mixed it mixed in there. Um, I would say a lot of my really intent questioning probably came my senior year. Um, okay. Intentional directed question. Cause I, I was my junior year. Well, even my freshman and sophomore year, like I said, things started like people I think were in my life that were challenged me in a lot of different areas. And I was just, man, I was a sponge. I would take up anything. And I think like, I've always been a person who's fairly willing to talk up, up just about anything, you know, mm -hmm. and to listen and to hear it out and to like evaluate my own self. But like, I think there were so many different people who I was like absorbing from that it, it kind of like came to boil. And I was like, okay, I actually got to just deal with some of this. And I think having, I don't know how much you remember, like Ray Fuentes as my roommate, my senior yeah. year, like, man, for the longest time, I, that, I thought that dude was like the smartest guy I'd ever met in my life. And he was just <laughs> like a crazy genius, you know? I and I still him. think that he is like that. And, but he was like, he would always like, we'd always have these like stimulating, challenging conversations. And uh, I would just like soak it up. And I would like always... I always love to play a devil's advocate too. And I think that's why, I don't know, there's a period in my life, this might surprise you because I don't think it was the period that we were in yeah. uh, together, but people thought that I was smart. <laughs> and Okay, I'm like <laughs> agreeing and now I'm realizing what you're saying and I'm not agreeing. I, I don't think I... <laughs> <laughs> you, you never thought that i was smart tricked yeah. me on that one I, no i never i never was like this guy's not smart <laughs> yeah and so but i think it's because i kept my own opinions to myself for so long like i would start to have like you know borderline somewhat controversial thoughts on things it started with like you know like uh just even like calvinism armenian de debate which is such an undergrad christian school thing oh, yeah. you know but you're here on the bus on the way to class at Liberty. And yeah. stuff, and you're just like, Oh my God. No, not again. <laughs> but, uh, but I would just like question, like ask, 
guided and prodding questions to other people. And they're like, man, this guy, he's smart, but I would never reveal my own opinions. And it was such a guarded thing for me. Opinions were such a private um, and intimate thing for me that I wouldn't share them. And that, that was actually something I struggled with revealing to people, my true thoughts on things for, for a long time, but yeah. that's for another I still, I still have that problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, yeah. that. Oh, I'm I like, still do. Yeah. Uh, especially with family, like not family mm-hmm. all the way, but like parents, in-laws, like I'm just like, yeah. it's not worth it. Like, there's just mm-hmm. way too much going on. And I don't feel like it's just too much work to, because the, it's exhausting the, explaining your thoughts and because it also comes with like, at least for me, like the past to get you to where I'm at now, I have to take you to the past like 10, 15 years yep. of my learning. I know. Cause and like you, I said, my, my crisis of faith was continually learning and continually evaluating and reevaluating and examining and letting things go and holding other things and being willing to let those things like it was, there was never a point where I was just like, Oh my gosh, like, do I just drop it all? There were multiple little t- times when I was like, yeah. do I drop this? Do I drop that? Yeah. And there have been a few points where I've been like, certainly been like, all of this like you know do i even want to be a part of any of this you know Mm -hmm. and there were some sort of little existential crises here and there um but i think i don't know and like i think anytime you learn a lot of information even if it's i don't know whatever filter you're perceiving that information through in such a short time it's going to lead to like one of a few things it's going to lead to like arrogance or just you're just going to crash. And I think for me, it was kind of both, but mainly there was this period where I think I was very arrogant and douchey about the information that I was learning. Yeah. I remember that period in my life too. I still, yeah. like, free some of the conversations I had with oh, people yeah. I said to them, they're just like, how did they even stay friends with you? If I, if I, I know it's tough. If I said that to somebody now, like the only reasonable response would be to look me in the eyes and say, go fuck yourself, man. And <laughs> <laughs> the only reasonable response to the way that I treated people, like yeah, I should have been told that so many times mm-hmm. in my life. No, I I think you're right. I think that goes for me as well. And I think, oh man, what was I going to say? I thought it was. I think the thing that is, like I mentioned earlier, like my parents kind of started, but I think has been progressively helpful to me is the ability to hold tension. And so for me, is to keep me from just like exploding my brain and just to be this like f- fetal position all the time of existential crisis is ability for me to hold tension and wrestling with these deep confusing things for for a decade you know and to be able to like when i get a question be like i know that i'm not going to be able to solve this now you know so i have to be able to willing to wrestle with this question for a few years to come with a satisfactory place or a satisfactory answer or just to be fine with not being able to find an answer to that yeah. and i and i think my wife kind of was like a little different because i was when we first met like she would ask me questions and i was i was the you know the seminarian so she had like a lot of questions and And a lot of things that she had held for all of her life, I was like, well, actually, that's not really the best way to view this or that. Or, you know, there's a lot more nuance and freedom to that than you think. And then she was like, well, I've got to question everything at the same time. (laughs) And it really was like a crisis of faith for her. And we're we're definitely still working through some of those issues. Not as though, I don't want to be careful with how I say that. It's not like I'm working to guide her, to like show her, like I can't just put her where I am. Because even me, like I'm still in a place of confusion and I would say agnosticism on certain topics, you know, but it's just because I'm fine with having the tension there and the the, the mystery. But I am definitely in a different, go ahead. I'm rambling. That's a a big deal and something that, you know, Sam, we've, we've talked about that quite a few bit or quite a bit on the past episodes. You know, Sam talks about like, uh, an addiction to certainty that a lot of people oh, have. Oh man, you know? yeah, that's a good book yeah. title. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a great book title. It's, it's essentially, a book title. Uh, Pete Ends has the book, "The Sin of Certainty." Oh, you're right. I <laughs> Pete Ends. I Beach read some of this stuff. But I think that's really difficult for a lot of people, and I feel like it, it's 
it varies per person by issue too. Like there's certain things in your life where you're like, I need to make a decision on this. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't hold this and, and just, you know, wonder about it and keep yeah. talking about yeah, it. Yeah. It's going to drive me insane. But like, what if somebody yeah. asks me, I got to have an answer. I think it's people, tr- I think people generally turn to religion for the answers, not the m- questions. And mm. my, my personal opinion mm. on that is it's just a bunch of, answers is religion gone wrong so absolutely that we're in a weird spot now because almost all of religion or the christian religion is like is the i have questions i need answers because they don't the friendly uh generous side of me will say it's because people have too much else going on in their life and they just want they don't want to deal with the existential questions they just want to focus on putting food on the table or paying the bills mm-hmm. uh, yeah the general- i don't have time for that some people aren't like i i don't think that kindly of many people uh as a whole but uh, <laughs> i certainly don't Fair enough. like uh but even if i don't know that's probably like at least to some level the underlying reason for it is um maybe even for men too I think, you know what, I, I, I think men, and more in particular, and I don't know, I'm, I'm probably stepping on some dangerous territory uh, trying to parse out the differences between men and women on certain things. But um, my understanding of studies shown is that women are more like, they're actually, they're more likely to believe in God, but less likely to be, uh, have any sense of dogmatism. Uh, but mm-hmm. men, when they do believe in God, are often more dogmatic. Yeah. And they just need they want, they just, I don't know. That probably goes back to patriarchal bullshit and having control uh, mm-hmm. is my guess. But well, that's like why, why Deaton was saying that he's telling his wife how it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's what I was trying to say that I'm I mean, not. I, don't to crazy, but, I mean, that's basically right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. You're very conservative of you. You haven't let go of everything. No, no, I'm trying to not do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, I don't know, guide her in learning how to ask questions and find answers for herself. Yeah. And because I can't just, like anybody, just be like, here's, because I think the, the problem that we have is just being like, well, tell me the answer I want to hear right now. Like, no, like that's that's the why we're in the problems that we're in right now, because we're just getting these cheap automatic answers, but we don't actually know how to flesh out. It's It's the progress to getting those answers that helps us like i don't know like i don't know if this sounds too cheesy or trite but like i think it's true like we we do go to the bible for answers and not questions but i think it's i don't know like i'm probably gonna hate i said this later but like i think it is more appropriate to find out what are the right and appropriate questions like that's where i think it is more helpful Mm -hmm. and i think like and this is something like anytime i've taught a class or like a session on something like i i don't know like i i i appreciate the things that i've learned and i've spent like a lot of time learning and reading and some things i'm more solid on but a lot of things i'm more like i said acknowledging the tension there and I, I appreciate that but one thing I, I tell so many people and I think it's so true is when you go to the Bible with certain asking certain questions and the Bible has no intention of answering those like you're just going to end up being confused and frustrated or just wildly mistaken about what the Bible is actually yeah, trying to communicate some, like crazy oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it answers what it wants to answer so you have to go in with the appropriate questions like what is it trying to communicate what is it you know and a lot of times that does not fit into what we're asking like as a culture like as a church and that's what is so frustrating to me is to see other people so frustrated (laughs) about like like basically i don't know like i don't want to get in too much of a rant but like what we view as like the modern evangelical movement is just so they're so misguided on the appropriate questions, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, like when you go to the Bible for, and even just quick answers, like you're going to be frustrated. Like, nah, you can read. And this is something I tell people too. Like if you go to the Bible, just, yeah. If you want to understand like about God and love and like sending his son and what that like requires of you and what that like looks like, like, 
that's there. That, that's quick. That's easy. But these things that you're wanting to know about this deep, nuanced understanding of like good and evil and relationships and how that fleshes out in your context and culture, like you're going to have to wrestle with things for a while, you know, because those are not quick and easy answers that come from the Bible, you know, like even from itself. And like, if you go to those with just quick, easy things, you're just going to wind up damaging yourself and somebody else. Yeah. I, so actually, that makes me think of a couple of questions. Um, one, so as you said, you don't, you didn't have any real big crisis of faith. It was just kind of like these mini things, not mini to diminish them, but it was just like certain things here or there along the road, which I, I, I resonate with. I think, um, I think I've stated before that part of the reason I'm, I was able to stay uh, within a, a version of Christianity is that um, I didn't have a moment of like, ah, this is not for me anymore. Like it was just mm-hmm. little things like, I don't know about that. And then I'd go and learn more about it and be like, oh, well, then yeah. I, I'm moving in this direction now. Yeah. Uh, and there were times that I wanted to leave sometimes, like just from like what I see other people being, I'm like, I'm not that. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be that. I know. And so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it sounds like there wasn't any real like catalyst. Like, there's no major catalyst for change. Like, the catalyst seems to be for you that you just like to learn, and that you don't typically feel the need to shut conversations down if it uh, if something's pushing against any sort of belief that you already hold. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, fair. I think it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so that's a, okay. So that touches on. Uh, something I was curious to ask you because you know you and I haven't been Facebook friends uh, for the second time for very <laughs> long but uh, I see you on there I see you uh, slinging some slinging some uh, some knowledge some opinions asking some questions uh, it doesn't feel like uh, the conservative Christian culture right now at least the one that's being the loudest right yeah. now mm-hmm. is very appreciative of things that go against the narrative that they've established and decided mm-hmm. on. Like it, what, 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 what do you find most frustrating about, or where do, where do you see like your, your experience, your faith and what it means to you as differing from what's being labeled broadly as Christianity today? Yeah. I'll, I, I think I've, I've thought about this a, f- a fair amount but I think one of the things that I've always has been a huge pet peeve of mine, which I think for a lot of people were aggravated by things that we find easy, but other people struggle with, um, is for me the idea of that holding tension and to be able to have that self-reflection and to, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that might hear this and be like, oh, I've never got that opinion of Deaton that he, I've always thought he was stubborn and hardheaded in some ways I am. But like the idea that, to be able to examine your own thoughts and opinions, honestly. Um, and like I said, I'm, I don't do that all the time perfectly, but that's something I value in myself and I try to be intentional about. And it just confounds me and frustrates me when I see us or people doing that collectively and in broad ways to just to not have any notion of that you might be wrong about something. And to examine those things and in and, and, and like a humble and accurate way. <clears throat> and like that's something like generally if I post something on Facebook, like I try to be very reserved. But it, if I got to that point, it's because I was like probably very livid about something. <laughs> and I generally try to like mute that in my, the way I share. Like I try not to be very emotional. I try to, you know, just be very reserved. And even the post but it probably represents something I'm like deeply angry about, you know? And it's one thing so yelling at the horse, you try to lead it to water. Cause that way kind of thing. I, I, I try, I don't know, like, an, I don't know how to do this well, but I try at least in a social media context, I think relationally I, I can do it better, but like I try to just ask questions in a way that makes people feel comfortable to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't just want to go up to somebody and be like, Hey, you're wrong about this, or I think you're wrong about this, or even, or even like accuse, like just like, hey, have you thought about this? Like, or be like, there's a broad, I, spectrum of ideas about this, and mm-hmm. there's some validity here, and I don't know. Like, I think the way in which I, 
have examined myself and asked and not afraid to ask questions has been encouraging to other people who see that i don't know if that, if that sounds weird or not okay. but i and so i don't know like if i were to i would like to have that be some sort of influence on social media but like it is frustrating when you're like you just get like and sometimes some people do that well like i'll engage and like i don't know literally anything and it's exhausting but i don't so i don't do it all the time but like i'll talk to like anybody but i just want to show people the way of being open-minded about something and you know if somebody comes to my post and is just kind of shitting on it and is just incredibly close-minded and just sarcastic and yeah. i will return that like i will <laughs> if you, like if you trolled me I will, I will troll you, you know, like yeah, I will troll. be sarcastic and, and by like, I try not to do that, but there was this one dude who did it and I just, I just went in. I feel like I specifically and, know what you're talking about. And I remember reading that and thinking, I like this. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I really do try not to, like, I want everybody to understand like your opinion. I, I want to say respected, but I also don't want to say respected. It can be, um, I, respect the fact that you have a different opinion than yeah respect the opinion i suppose exactly like i want to give you the the freedom and the space to know that your opinion is welcome here but it's not free from criticism um yeah. and i i would, I would like that. that point where when when we get to a point where you have to verbalize well i have a right to my own opinion like that's a that's a thing that dumb people say when they say something <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like yeah I mean, you do. there's no arguments left to make other than well i'm entitled to my own opinion like well you sure right. you are you're also entitled to run your car off a bridge but i don't think that's like a good idea although that's <laughs> i guess technically illegal so you're not really entitled to that but i don't know i'm not good with analogies off the fly <laughs> so <sighs> what is it okay so i know with a question casey asked and I feel like, I don't know if there's the assumption that we know where you're coming from, but I want to um, push you to be a little bit less ambiguous. And Okay, which is something I've been practicing <laughs> for the past 15 years is how to be ambiguous. So. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't mean that as a pejorative by any means, because I, I frequently straddle that line. Because um, it's, it's clear that, there's a, like, that there is a difference. I don't even think we need to get into the specifics of the differences, because it... It's not entirely not obvious when you are looking at like, your typical conservative evangelical Christianity and its current form and mm -hmm. p position uh, in the American zeitgeist and and then what, where you're coming from, which is obviously a challenge to that. And I think it's without having to get into semantics and the specifics, most people know what that looks like. Uh, so but I what I what always interests me and uh and it's something i still think about for myself uh, which is probably why it's interesting to me is what's kind of like what's the so if christianity is so broad and everyone can can hold that banner and believe radically different things on every topic like like you mentioned how hard it is to explain where you are now because you don't you have to go through the past 10 years of your life mm -hmm. uh, i'm in a similar boat but it's like, not only do I have to go through how I got there, I have to explain that on a very fundamental level, my understanding of God, the Bible, and my purpose in this world, and what happens after you die, if anything happens after you die, is mm -hmm. exceptionally different than anything, any, like, than, than any, anything an evangelical might hold and believe. And for mm -hmm. them, that's radically, and what I would believe is radically, outside the realm of Christianity, and I would not be considered yeah. one. And yeah, I'm okay with that uh, mm -hmm. in the same way that I almost have a hard time considering that to be anything other than a co-opted version of, uh, of the concept of faith and turn it into just an American, I don't know, capital. It, it's just kind of just like falls in line with like the uh, Amer American capitalistic mindset of your place in this world. So yeah. I, I have a lot of problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, so when you get into this point of your life where that's so radically different and doesn't seem to reflect or represent any Christian mm -hmm. concepts or ideas or anything that you understand uh, that Jesus would have been about, um, what's the point uh, of it? 
um, <laughs> the point of staying Christian for you. Yeah, yeah. The, and then kind of like, I guess a jumping off question for that is um, if, if two people holding the same banner can really just have radically different beliefs, does, does your belief really mean anything? And mm -hmm. what do you do with what you believe? And if it's different, is it because we can't, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, can you, do your, I guess, do your beliefs matter or is it just about how you uh -huh. live and function in this world? That's really yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I wish that I had been taking notes during that question. <laughs> Too long of a question. <laughs> that is such a, that such a stupid way to ask a question. That was like such no, I'm an idiot because that was like um that's what I would give as an answer to probably somebody. And I'm like uh, yeah, yeah. Just you just like gave to me like a little soapbox. <laughs> just like uh and asking like, the question. Really you, guys, but, uh, you know, I can tell we're we're there's some things happening here. If you guys want to take a moment and pray with me and accept <laughs> Satan into your heart, we can do that right now. Let's do it. And I, I probably remember my freshman year evangelism class, my little script that I'd come up with. Can I, Casey, do you mind, um, you mind leading us in that prayer? I understand that you have a very robust prayer life and remember how to do it really well. <laughs> right. I definitely have the words memorized in case I ever have to backpedal. <laughs> in case he's so, caught in a family Thanksgiving or something. Do your parents ever ask you to say grace? Me? The, no, thankfully Casey. they've. Uh, okay. Do your parents pray before meals and stuff when you're over? Yeah, but you know, if I kind of rush and start eating, then usually. <laughs> <I> <laughs> Like usually if I throw a bite in my mouth before they sit down, then they kind of look at each other awkwardly and then just go start eating. That's <laughs> my <Sly> move. <laughs> Casey's the first one to dig in each. We, um, my, I, we would go to my grandmother's for like Thanksgiving, not this year because we were responsible during the pandemic, but, um, we <laughs> normally like no one in my mom's, it's just my mom's side of family. Nobody's like really religious at all. Like maybe one person, when they want to be, when their life isn't going great and they need something. But, uh, my dad, uh, he just still, he just does like the prayer, like the Thanksgiving blessing every year. And it's so awkward. It wasn't when I was a kid and when I was younger, I remember being like, this is a powerful witnessing tool. And now I'm older. I'm sitting around the table with a bunch of adults between the ages of 30 and 70 with their eyes open, just like, uh, <laughs> is this going to be over? Lord bless this Stouffer's stovetop stuffing <laughs> on sale at Walmart right now for two ninety nine. It sounds like a bit. Had, it sounds like something from uh, Talladega Nights. <laughs> <laughs> I think I undermined your question, Sam. But to summarize, I think what you're saying is you got such radically different sects under this very yeah. broad banner. Yes. Is there is there purpose in in continuing to to live under that banner? Is the banner even even worthwhile at this point, yeah. given how much variation there is and how you know dramatically different they are? Yeah, oh, is man. that right, Sam? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And if so, why? Like, so for yeah, evangelical, yeah. Like, their mission is saving souls. Well, I, they say it's their mission. I don't really see them yeah. on the street corner that much doing anything. But um, you know, what's the mission? I guess for you, what's yeah, the yeah. drive? No, that's that's a good question. And I think if I were to say like what's the heart of that question is like what is the root of what I would call like my faith and how much I would put that as a and also I think like what are what are the minimums of faith? Cause I think in questions of like oh, I'm gonna when I ramble, I, I can go on for a while. So I'm gonna try not to do that. Yeah. But even like a lot of the stuff is still very much stuff that I am sorting through and like nailing down. And I also don't want to nail down to a degree. Like I want to have some ambiguity. Like there are certain things that I think are central and vital. Like if you're going to have some sort of like Christian faith, obviously the Christ is gotta be some sort of centrality. And not even like, sure. there are a lot of things that I am like agnostic about and, uh, 
hold very loosely that I think a lot of people hold very tightly. And I think even just from my experience in education, I don't want to say like, oh, I've learned this. I'm smarter than other people. So this is the right way. Um, I think I've definitely learned to grow and see where there is nuance and tension where people, it's just easier to say that there's not, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, it is very much a centralizing thing like the person and the work of jesus to bring about like a kingdom devoted to himself you know and and to yahweh and i i i I don't know like i I struggle using even christian terms not just because of like the context of like this podcast but even just like they annoy me you talk the way you want to talk and they're asking what they want to hear about you they just personally annoy me but it's hard because I also don't know better ways to phrase things than just what I've grown up using. But I think there's, I don't think that there's a lot of room and validity for aggressive dogma. And I, I forgot what you said, but there was a thing that you said that I'm like, that doesn't sound as much like faith as it does dogma. And mm-hmm while there is room for like dogma as a like teaching and centralizing around teaching and, and sharing that and exercising that in our own selves, but being, I guess the more cultural connotation of dogma being something we hold over somebody else. Like, I don't think that there's room for that. Like, and under, we don't, cause we don't leave the rooms for that. I do think there is room for ambiguity. There is room for different perspectives under like a, a broader um, uh, umbrella of like Christianity and faith. And I think that that is important. And I think we're in a lot of troubles because we've just kind of closed up that umbrella. And, and I think, I don't know, like I am so frustrated that we get caught on these little, just uh, stupid little quibbles and arguments that, I don't know. Like I'm trying not to go into a bunch of different soap boxes right now. Yeah, there's so many you could go on. So. <laughs> I know, and just vent all of my frustration. But, but I think even the way that I term my like myself, um, I mentioned it a little bit ago. But like, uh, there has been times where I'm like, I am not an evangelical, and I've been like bold, like I am not an evangelical because this yeah. is what evangelicals are now, and I am not that. I am not them. So I'm something profoundly different. But then there's been other times where I've kind of bounced back and be like, well, I don't think they're even, they're not evangelical. They're fundamental. They just co-opted the term. I'm like, no, I got to take it back. Damn it. You know? And it's been like this quest for, I don't know, vengeance that I wanted to take it. But now I'm just like, (laughs) well, that's what the the term is. Then like, whatever. Yeah. Like how, up we're going to get over vocabulary words yeah like in some ways i consider myself evangelical but if you view that as what we commonly say as evangelical like you'll be confused with me i think you know like i very much hold a um a, a preeminence and importance of of jesus and his reestablishment of our relationship with god and like Jesus is a real thing in my faith. And there have been times where that has been like, you know, questioned and coming. And I hold a lot of empathy uh, and sympathy for people who struggle with that and people who question that. Like, I think knowing where my own questions and struggles have been, like, I definitely hold that, you know, and I, like I said, I would disagree with somebody about certain things, but I understand the struggle and desire to even reject certain things. And even like the idea of evangelical, oh man, I'm skipping around, but like the idea of evangelicalism, like I, one thing that led me in my own thoughts about that is like, I don't want my acceptance of something to be on what like other people are displaying. Like, and there, there was a time when I was like, maybe I, I guess I, if I'm honest with myself, I thought about potentially like just dropping, I guess, organized and pronounced like faith but like i don't want my faith to be dependent on these other you know schmucks you know (laughs) and so i was just like no like they cannot define my faith they cannot define 
like they are not Jesus. They cannot define my faith. They, they, they should not be the object of my faith. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, like, even in my, I guess, just focus, my singular, I guess, pillar being Jesus, I also do struggle with be like, well, they're not Christian. I think they can be poor Christians. But I don't know. Like, I, I've just become so, like, I... I, it seems like it's begging the question: I, What it mean? What does it mean to be a Christian? Is it a set of beliefs you hold? Is it a knowledge to assent to? Is it a way that you live your life? Is it? What is it? I, I, yeah, I think I think it's like all of the above. That's and I a think we, I mean, that is somewhat rhetorical. I'm not looking for you to just. Throw, okay. Not, okay. Not, I was like, well, is that his actual question? No, it's that's a little rhetorical. I mean, you can riff off of it, but don't, I'm not yeah. expecting you to. Like, and I, I feel like that's. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of where your initial question essay was kind of going. <laughs> but like, I f like, is this, is it worth having these like dividing characteristics? Well, not if they're, you know, just going to be, I don't know, like different, I don't know, ideological camps, I think can be harmful. I think they can be beneficial in understanding like where people are. Um, but oh, man, my yeah. brain just, I mean, the language only goes so far. Yeah. Like there's like, it, the language can be like if I'm if I'm mm -hmm. trying to communicate an idea or a belief that I have, I'll I'll cater it differently to maybe like my parents. Yeah. I'm like I know what they're I know their language. I grew up in it. I'm have, I was steeped in it for so long that to some degree, for better or worse, it's always going to be a part of me. Um, yeah, it's ingrained in my psyche in some ways. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, and I think belief will always require. Or I don't know, like faith will always require a belief in acting on that belief. And I think we commit our the greatest injustices of faith, like when we just focus on one or the other of those. And I think that's what I see in like, I don't know, either camps going one way or another. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, but I think what gets tough with that is when you have, um, I don't know, if you have shitty beliefs that make you do shitty things. It's like Yeah, well, I, yeah, no argument here. I, yeah. And I think that's where it comes like, the, like the belief system come like reevaluating. And I would say that the, you can hold a, a wide range of, and this goes back to like the tension thing that I think I've been talking about the whole time. You can hold a wide range of different beliefs, but the central things are, I think for me, it really does boil down to like the centrality and genuineness of the Jesus person, the Jesus, like God. And, yeah. and like, people who disagree on that. Like I said, I will like have discussions on that, like all, all, all day. And even like where people land on those in different, um, different expressions or whatever. Like I have a lot of empathy for, and I think a lot of like, uh, I'm at ease with even some of the tensions. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, like I, feel... I definitely think there's a, a dividing line or a boundary line at some point. I don't know what that is. And I'm not going to work too hard on focusing on what that is. I know so, you were saying that you wanted to be a biologist and now Casey's not a biologist, but he knows a lot about whale stomachs and he might have a lot of <laughs> teaching Dude, about whales, whales because are crazy. that's, uh, yeah, that's, we keep coming that's back to whale stomachs and that's where his fell apart. His faith fell apart. <laughs> is it like the evolu like the evolutionary like progress of whales? Is that what it is? Oh, it's just whether or not a dude can live in one. Oh, you know. Okay. Well that, that brings me to, Yeah. Well that brings me to other things, but <laughs> we don't have to hash it out. It's been we it's just keep I, it's come up a few times and I can't uh Yeah. Well if like... you ever want to talk about just like old testament like <laughs> mythologies and stuff, like that is literally what I wanted to get my doctorate in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think that would be interesting because I've just never heard like a realistic person's view on on some of those things. Yeah, well, you know? I don't know. Like, I, I don't mean, want to get into it too much. Right? Like, I I hold a lot of uh, looseness in <laughs> that as well. Yeah. One one more question, if I can. Uh, so obviously, like crazy times right now. I think the general like historical data and just, just all around like, you know, idea that people push forward is that like 
hard times are kind of good for religion, right? When people are pushed and they're and they're hurting and they're having, you know, their lives are tough, mm-hmm. they tend to turn back towards their faith. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the times that we're in are going to be good overall for the for the you know the ranks of Christianity, or do you think that they've positioned themselves at a point in a, in a way that it's going to make them very, very difficult for them to, uh, to reach yeah. out to people. Yeah. I think that's an interesting question. And this is something me and Hannah have talked about quite a bit. Hannah's my wife, by the way, the, um, I feel like tough times really just show what you genuinely value and what you're generally passionate about. Yep. And for some people, I think that expresses as like real faith. Some people, I think that's comfort. And I think like for us, like in where we see things kind of delineating now, I think you see people very much siding with comfort. And I, I do think that there is kind of, maybe this is also just hopeful thinking, like a, a schism kind of growing, like maybe it's not, a, it's definitely not a 50, 50 split, but I, I do think that you're seeing even some Christians who are like, okay, this is really getting out of hand and doing some introspection and evaluation um, or be like, well, I didn't really notice that this was here this much, but like I do, like, if you wanted some um, ambiguity or n- not ambiguity, like I do think like this form of like Christian nationalism that we've, we've got in a lot of ways is just one of the most evil things that I've witnessed in my yeah. life. And it's so frustrating. And I would say like, demonic and like antichrist and i want to use those things that people in evangelical circles say with weight against them because i very much think that it is you know um like i just as just as just an evil that i think needs to be purged but it doesn't look like it's going to be and people are more satiated and satisfied in it than i think they've they've ever been and i think flamboyant about it and that's what's like kind of scary it's like no you're not even like dying. Are, are you thinking we just have one night of the year where we just get to kill as many of them as we want, like in the movie? Is that what you're right. going? Uh, I'm going to quote you. On that. That's going to actually we open the episode with um, like a quote or something. Oh, from, okay. So it's going to be that, um, and we're going to power edit this pretty hard, so it'll sound okay. Good. Well, then do what you will. So, but I need you to say, no, I don't. I just need you to say uh, we need one night of the year where we have a purge and kill as many of the quote unquote Christians as we What can. if we just lock all of them on little cages on the Mexican border? <laughs> Perfect. Give them exactly. You know what? That's actually uh, more Christ-like, I think, because it's do yeah. unto others, right? Do, uh, do yeah. unto others you have them to yourself. So clearly that's what they're looking for. And that, so that's, that's a good idea. I like the way you brought that back to Jesus. Christ probably would have taken a little step further. He was like, take out your own eyeball if it causes you to stumble or he, he would have been... <laughs> Like now you're moving to Mexico. Yeah. I'm mortified right now. You guys are extremists. Uh, no, yeah. no. Uh, radical revolutionaries. I prefer the term radical revolutionaries. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I think I think to your point, I think right now we're getting to see, uh, you know, a lot of people who profess mm-hmm. strong beliefs in two things, right? A political mm-hmm. ideology and a mm-hmm. religion. We're seeing yeah. very clearly which one offers them the most comfort. Yeah. yeah. We're seeing the one that the side that cares about people and the side that, you know, cares about power. And you could be a conservative and care about people. I do think that I have kind of left conservatism. And I feel fairly confident and comfortable saying that. I think my family at this point knows that. But um, I don't know, like just so many people just – and this, this this God and country juxtaposition, this forceful reinterpretation of everything and of, of history. Like I don't know, I don't want to be too dramatic in the way. Yeah, I mean, I but they see it. themselves as like they see this as like a prophetic thing. Where like we are, like where oh, they, absolutely. they are. I don't know. Somehow, uh, some of them go so far as to call themselves like a new Israel, and that yeah. like they have God's blessing. Yeah. Like, they I kind mean, of like a prophetic rally. Them. They yesterday do. like and there was just thousands of people doing that same th- and that to me it's like that is what is just fucked up 
yeah. about the way in which we've just combined and distorted. Well, we've the way in which we've combined politics and faith, like I'm not going to say those should never be intertwined in some incredibly nuanced way, yeah. but we've broken both of those. You know, the way in which I I see fundamentalist Christian, and I, I intentionally want to use fundamentalist, like fundamentalist, like Christians have broken both politics and faith in the way they've distorted them into each other. Yeah. I mean, that, that, the mindset that brought them to the point that they are at is now like, it's a prime, it's just prime for, they're prime for radicalization. And I'm not trying to be over dramatic either, but no, it's like, not like I, we're I, at a point where it's like, they, there's yeah. no mindset. It's just like they hear, they'll hear from someone on their media outlet mm-hmm. that something's being taken from them and they're going to be pushed to the sidelines and that enough is enough. And they just keep like, it's just a pressure cooker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if there's one thing that's comforting about all of this, it's that I think that both of you are headed my direction and <laughs> I want you to just look down and you follow my footsteps in the sand. <laughs> and you know, when you look back, there's only one set. <laughs> that's where you went off and did your own dumb thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were going to be carrying me the whole way, Casey. Mm. Oh, no, no. I, <sighs> I, I don't do anything for anyone else. I thought <laughs> when there was one set in the sand, it's because we were holding hands and you were walking on the sand and I was just walking with my feet in the water. That's what I thought. Mm. That's nice. I like that one. That is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Chris, it's been a ton of fun catching up with you, man. Yeah, let's uh, let's not go like a decade in between contact now. Let's try not to, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, next time you have a major transformations of faith and you want to get on here and let the whole world know all right that'll probably be tuesday (laughs) (laughs) we'll we'll book you for tuesday (laughs) yeah yeah cool thanks so much yeah no this was a true pleasure thank you for stalking me on facebook and uh poaching me (laughs) anytime All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll talk to you next time.